Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when His glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. This is written to people that ended up being put to death and put in prison for their testimony. For preaching the cross of Christ. Can you imagine if you get locked up because you're out preaching the gospel, you knock on somebody's door, oh, you got the virus, call the cops, lock them up. Then all of a sudden you're getting persecuted for being a Christian. Can you imagine, are you really going to worry about how, how good the quality of treads are on your truck tires? Are you going to worry about whether or not it's organic apple juice? You, you understand what I'm saying? You, you really begin to prioritize and it changes your perspective a little bit when you put, your sh put yourself in the shoes of the early Christians and the actual tribulation they went through. The fiery trial of their flesh. And you know what? They're going to have an awesome rapport. When we get to heaven and we talk to them, man, oh man. I mean, we think we're something because you know maybe you got 100 people saved in your lifetime of soul winning or even one. You say, hey man, I got one and it mattered. Praise the Lord for that. But when we talk to them and we hear what they went through and they didn't budge, they said, take this flesh. What are you going to do? You can't take my soul. Look at the next verse. He says, Re rejoice, verse 13. Rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now sometimes he's saying, listen, when His glory be revealed, hey, at the resurrection, and, and you get that reward, that recompense for the things that were done in your flesh, then you'll have exceeding joy. But he's saying, listen, when you're downtrodden, when you're going through a fiery trial in the flesh, you can still rejoice knowing that the promises of the Lord are true. Verse 14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Let none, none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. He's saying don't, don't su suffering as a criminal isn't the same as suffering as a Christian. He says, but if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. You remember what we read in Ezekiel 9? He said, go to the threshold of the church. And stand at the church. And those ancient men that claim to be of God that are not, they're not right in their heart. They're partaking in the abominations. He says, start with them. Take your slaying weapon and fill the sanctuary with blood. Whoa. What a prayer. Lord, would you just kill all the false prophets? What a prayer. What a, what a statement by this angel. And you see here, he says, judgment must begin at the house of God. Listen, if the Holy Spirit's in you, you are the house of God. You are are the house of God. Judgment should begin with you. You should judge yourself. If you judge yourself, you would not be judged of God. If you'll judge yourself and forsake sin when you recognize it in your life, when you recognize you're falling, you're faltering, and if you'll just deal with it then and there, then God doesn't have to come down and, you know what, you've stiffened your neck against my law and my judgment, now I have to really bring you down. Now I have to humble you because you wouldn't be humbled.